at all of the, the construction. That's the example of construction. <coughs> I mean, not example, that's a clue. Y'all got some money coming Now, <clears throat> wherever we go, we see a pockets of people selling by the roadside. That is that is not a question. That's not a question. No. <laughs> I just want to confuse you a little bit. <laughs> People are selling by the roadside. Why is it so? When we were kids, our grand, uh, great grandparents and our grandparents taught us that entrepreneurship is the best way to go. The best way to go is entrepreneurship. The best way to develop. As a result of that, uh, some of them even at a tender age of five, they will put some things on top of your head to go and sell. Go and the, at least you have to put some, whether you are male or female. My mother was a bread baker, and always I have to carry bread on top of my head, go and sell early in the morning before I go to school and she will be keeping some little money down for me as a profit. And as a, at the point in time, they have to open an account for all my other siblings, everybody. Whatever you make, you have this percentage. Whatever you make, you have this percentage. I was a very good uh, uh, footballer. My first track suit that I bought, that was the money that I used to buy that track suit. <laughs> So they taught us how to do business. If you're a woman, and uh, 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 I'm happy to have a, a lady just on my right hand side, uh, she will also say something. You all want to hear from her. And uh, <laughs> yeah, she will tell you that over here, ladies, if you're a lady, you are born a lady, there are some things that you cannot escape. You cannot escape. No. One, cooking. Have you been cooking? Yes. Have you been cooking? Yeah, yes. Like yes. What, what do you cook? Yeah, they like to order out. Sometimes um, rice, sometimes fufu, banku. Okay. Who taught you how to cook? Me. Yeah, tell everybody. My mother teach me, it's okay. At what age were you taught how to cook? I'm small, maybe seven years. Did you put this on your head to go and sell? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Ah, oh, hey, can you be, can you be, can you be? <laughs> Oh, well done, well done. Um, we have our sister here, and um, I wanted to do introduction, but uh, it just escaped me. Uh, she will introduce herself. My name is Kovna. I'm the shortest person in the bus, and I'm the quiet person in the bus also. So who are you? Fine, <laughs> Okay, my name is Esther Ayoko. Okay. Anna. Okay. Okay. I'm from Accra here. Okay. Yes. So I'm a Ghanaian. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Angesta. Um, Angesta, I want to ask some few questions. Uh, based on what we are all sharing. In this bus, we share. We are one big family, and family we share things together. We don't hide anything from anybody, apart from something that I will mention. So, can you tell us, um, being a lady in your family, uh, what you went through, what you do, maybe from infancy to school time and now? We want to hear from you. We are all sharing. Okay. So, growing up was very interesting um, and lovely as well. And um, my mom taught me how to cook at the young age when I was um, started learning at the age of eight, nine years. And as you said, you know, they also teach you <laughs> how to uh, earn money as well. So 
if basically she's also doing something, she's selling something, she'll also help you to also do something so that when you grow, it will be part of you and you also help someone. So it has been very interesting here in Ghana and being in the family as well. He taught, she taught me so many things and like that too. And, and I was able to mingle among them and I've grown up to be like this. So being an African lady is great. Thank you. Yes, let's put our hands together for the African lady. <laughs> Thank you so much, my dear. Um, in the northern part of Ghana, is different, a little bit different from the north to the south. The north, if you are born as a man, there are some things they will not even allow you to get closer. You allow the women to do it. Because over here in Africa, it is the women who go for marriage. So at a tender age, you have to prepare your daughter to get herself ready in 25 years time, in 20 years time, in 30 years time, she'll be going, enter into marriage. So therefore, she was going through apprenticeship. That was why I talked about entrepreneurship. It starts from the very home. So there is something that we say that um, uh, it goes like this. Um, obedience and sacrifice starts from home. Respect starts from home. So if you don't respect your parents, you take it outside, someone will give you a dirty slap. You have to respect your parents from home. Why? Because they are your first teachers. And they will teach you to understand and to do the right thing. Yesterday I was saying something that in the in, in US, uh, someone told me that the child did something and then he just hold the child's hand and then he gave him some little lashes no. on the hand. The child have to run go inside, pick a telephone and call the police. Are a child a 10 years old girl. Why? My mother has beaten me. And then the child was taken from the mother. Uh -oh, no. Hey, here in Ghana. <laughs> what happened? The whole community beat you. Someone will beat you. You, you, you don't have the right to report to anyone because she's trying to check you to become a proper adult in the future. That's it. That's it. You have no right to go to the police. If you, when you call the police, the policeman will tell you if you if would have done a good thing, your mother wouldn't have beaten you. And if you don't take care, the policeman will come inside Maybe. your room, your house, wherever you are, and give it to you again. Yeah. <laughs> because it is the society that trains children. Yeah. Not basically your parents. You have access to the society more than your parents. Everybody can check you out. And in the community, if you do such a thing, you are a bad boy or bad girl whatsoever, this can link you from childhood to adulthood. That when you are about to get married, you will never get a husband in the community or no one will propose to you. Or, for example, if you are a guy and you are a bully, you are a thief, you are uh, 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 in a bad society, mingling with bad boys, you will never get a woman to marry in the community. And if you are not able to get a woman to marry in the community, your parents will not sanction your marriage. If your parent doesn't sanction your marriage, your marriage will never succeed. They need to give you their blessings and that will go with you forever and ever. Well, you know, I, I just like to say when I was being raised years ago, I, 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 well, it's just that in Mississippi, uh -huh. years ago, yes. it used to be like that. The teachers in the classroom, they didn't have to report to your mother or father. They could get you. You see, it used to be like that. I know the government has stepped in, but child labor, uh -huh. child labor is what I look at. And I met a young girl, we were here two weeks and with the family. This little girl, I asked her, when did you learn how to cook like this? Uh -huh. The rice, 
Then outside, the mortar, the little thing you mash, yeah. she was showing me how to do the, you know, no, no. Uh -huh. She said, and do yeah. it like this. And, I, mm -hmm. <laughs> and and we went outside, we were even doing it <laughs> with this long thing. So That's the mortar like, pistol. Hey, yes, uh -huh. yeah, like that. I was doing yeah, it wrong, but it wrong, her hands were yes. closer together. But the thing it. is, I looked at it like child labor. I, I'm just saying. Yeah. You know what I mean? But she was good at it. She did really well. Okay. You know, so, uh, but child labor, to me, at home, when my daughter was coming up, I didn't want her to work. Her job was school. Her job was school. That's your job. You do what you need to do at school, that's your job. So, I don't know. Yeah, okay, yeah, you guys.